In this lecture, we are going to be going over course terminology that will be helpful for you to know in our discussions of culture. So let's get started. Right off the bat, there is cultural identity. And you'll recall in another lesson that we discuss each of the six regulators of human life and identity and the role that each plays in shaping our unique cultural identity. We can have no direct knowledge of any culture other than our own. Our experience and knowledge of cultures is limited by our own perceptual bias and our own culture. When we speak about this, we use the term cultural identity, and you can see the definition there on the slide, identification with perceived acceptance into a culture or group that has a shared system of symbols and meanings, as well as norms for conduct. That's your cultural identity. Culture refers to self-sustaining communities, the totality of a group's thoughts and behaviors, social transmissions of thoughts and behaviors, and also the cultural identity of group members. So for our purposes, the definition of culture is the sum of ways of living, including behavioral norms, linguistic expression styles of communication, patterns of thinking, beliefs and values of a group large enough to be self-sustaining and transmitted over the course of the generations. Next term, subculture. Subculture resembles culture and that it's usually encompassing a relatively large number of people. And it also represents the accumulation of generations of human striving. Subcultures exist within a complex society and they also exist within dominant cultures. They are often based on geographic region, ethnicity, economic, or social, social class. Subculture is an accumulation of generations of human striving. So subculture is defined as a group based on vacation, avocation, or special skills that like cultures provide patterns of behaviors and values. Um, something to touch on while we're here on subculture, ethnic identity refers to identification with and perceived acceptance into a group with shared heritage and culture. Sometimes the word minority is used, but that technically has a numerical designation, and it really has only been defined originally by the Oxford English Dictionary since 1921. Next up, subgroups. Subgroups exist within a dominant culture and they are independent of that culture. For example, occupation. Subgroups do not necessarily accumulate values and patterns of behavior over generations in the same way that cultures do. So in this context, a subgroup can be defined as a group based on vocation, avocation, or special skills that like cultures provide patterns of behaviors and values. Now, subculture means part of a whole and implies that subculture is under or beneath culture, lesser than. Alternately, we use the term co-culture to suggest that no one culture is inherently superior to other coexisting cultures. Co-cultures share a system of laws in a homogenous culture, and we will define co-culture as an interdependent and equal subculture within a society. For example, the U.S. Census Bureau uses the term American Indian, which is actually derived from a colonizer worldview. The term is similar to the derogatory term primitive that was used during the colonial era. The term Native American came into use during the 1960s and 70s during the civil rights movement. The preferred term that the people in this culture apply to themselves is the name of their tribe. For example, Cherokee, some of my um, ancestors, Seminole, and Navajo. In Canada, the term Indian is considered offensive, and they prefer to use the term First Nations. The United Nations has used the term indigenous people since 2002. But again, many people object to this label since it puts all the people in this group in one label. 
1995 survey by the National Congress of American Indians and the National Tribal Chairmen's Association, that's a mouthful, found that 50% of people in this group preferred the term American Indian, while 37% preferred Native American. In our class, we're, we will use the term American Indian. There's also the concept of tribal sovereignty, and this refers to the ability of the tribes to govern themselves. This was guaranteed in 1832 in a Supreme Court case, a decision, Worcester versus Georgia. Now, as you've probably noticed in my discussion of the different terms that are used in different societies, national law also is reflected by cultural values. But in groups such as American Indians, the less powerful culture must accept the laws and the legal systems of the more powerful culture in which they exist. So although American Indians here in the United States have tribal sovereignty, they also are subject to the laws of our country in many cases. What should you know and take away from this? Um, you should be using in our class the word American Indian um, to refer to these people. All right, moving on. <laughs> Let's look at the word counterculture. Counterculture and subgroup are terms that are often used interchangeably, but counterculture implies going against mainstream culture, and it often has a negative or deviant con connotation. We will define counterculture in our class as a membership group of people with rules, behaviors, and desires separate from the larger culture, often actively protesting, trying to change those. We also have microculture. And if you're still watching at this point, I bet you're considering starting this over and making some flashcards because these terms do get a little complex. Microculture has been introduced and advocated for as a term to identify smaller groups bound together by a shared value system, behavior, and values. We will define microculture as specialized groups that can be considered cultures, but may comprise fewer people than most cultures. To avoid the negative connotations of the term subculture, co-culture, and subgroup, this term, microculture, is used and preferred. Finally, community. This is a term commonly used by the media to identify subculture, subgroup, and or counterculture. And in our class, community is defined as specialized groups that can be considered cultures, but, ooh, typo, may comprise fewer people than most other cultures. To, again, we use community to avoid the negative connotations of terms like culture, subculture, co-culture, and subgroup, so community. That was a lot. What's the takeaway? Here is our preferred course terminology. In this course, we will prefer the terms culture and community. So culture, again, the sum of the ways of living, including behavioral norms, linguistic expression styles of communication, patterns of thinkings, thinking, beliefs and values of a group large enough to be self-sustaining and transmitted over the course of generations, culture. On the other hand, community, the term preferred over subculture, subgroup, and counterculture, um, which can all carry negative connotations. Here is some helpful vocabulary to make sure you're on the right track, and this is the end of this lesson.